and ready to join us on tonight's journey. Uh, we show promises to be engaging. But first, uh, let's begin with tonight's major highlights. Yes. Case begins that Stabina becomes mess of sorts for presidential contenders. The challenge of tracking campaign stick meters and the social media. Also tonight, we gain some clarity on the prospects of several anticipated policy plans. We will start off our stories tonight by revisiting what we have come to know and regard as common practice by political parties during campaign seasons here in Nigeria, especially candidates vying for the country's topmost political job, uh, the president's position, of course. And that is the rush to the north western states are colloquially referred to as the three k's kaduna kanu and katsina well that rush has already begun with the recent convergence of most of the 2023 presidential contenders on kaduna where they attended a forum organized by the iowa joint committee at the iowa house kaduna for the candidates it was an opportunity to sell their visions and plans to the north as it were as it was the north was adequately represented at the forum by the Iowa Consultative Forum, the Northern Elders Forum, the Sir Amadou Bello Memorial Foundation, as well as the Jamaya uh, Matan Arawa. Uh, Arawa, as itself, was also there, and the Arawa Research Development Project was also represented. It may have begun already, but don't be surprised if the three Ks become a marker of sorts for these political gladiators this election season. In case you're still confused, are wondering as to why, then you may need to visit the INEC webpage to see the breakdown of registered voters in Nigeria for next year's election, and I'm sure you will then be able to put it together and understand the electoral relevance of the three, three Ks, Kadu, K, um, Kano, Kaduna, and Katsina. Uh, meanwhile, something else also registers with the public during electionary campaigns, and that is the rather unfortunate use of abusive and derogatory slurs, often amounting to hate speech by opposing camps. This time around, the Electoral Act 2022 clearly bars such practices and is further highlighted in the INEC guidelines for parties and campaigns for this season. Uh, quite often in the past, tracking such violators, especially on social media, their platforms was a huge challenge but now uh, various public and private groups are working on, on modalities to ensure proper tracking of violators uh, whether on twitter instagram and then um, facebook in the meantime the national human rights commission nhrc has vowed to exercise its power against anyone that uses H hate speech to threaten lives and property before during and after the 2023 uh, general elections a good one i should say for our electoral process i i mean moving on now tonight my guest is well experienced and knows strong political views he is yabaji sani presidential candidate action democratic party adp uh, welcome to the ballot thank you Andy. Uh, good, good thank to you having me yeah good to have you you know for, for us in the media uh, yours is a familiar face and um, i'm also sure um, it's also so for a lot of politicians out there of course uh, no doubt, I mean, it's, uh, a lot, uh, uh, it's um, largely due to the fact that you are chairman of the Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, and that makes you kind of popular. But, and also makes you part of the political system. But, you know, for, for me, uh, there is an irony. And the irony is that even though you sit at the top echelon of party politics, it would seem like you're sitting on the reserve bench you know, with your somewhat quiet campaign, and I mean that in relative terms to some of the other top contenders in the presidential race. Well, that's a question for me. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do not think you're on the reserve bench? No, I don't think so at all. I think uh, 
uh, politics is about uh, inclusivity, and that's what, uh, if you look at what INEC has done by the Electoral Act 2022, uh, and the fact that uh, now we have the legal framework, and uh, which makes it possible for uh, everybody, when I say everybody, meaning that those who have met the requirements of the Constitution, to participate and uh, participate effectively. As you know, uh, INEC has already uh, officially you know, uh, opened the campaigns and then the campaign is on. So uh, I believe that all the 18 political parties that uh, uh, are in this uh, exercise are effectively and seriously engaged you know, in campaigns. The campaign may take different styles. You know, so what, what exactly is your own style? Is no, you know, you know, I look at it and most of us look at it as a marathon race and you don't begin a marathon race with sprint. Okay. Otherwise you will get uh, tired before, you know, uh, the, the actual uh, finish line, you know. So this is why we will see that some parties are not making as much noise okay. as you are hearing from some camps. And, uh, it's uh, 2023, like I always said, it's going to be a, an election like no other in Nigeria because it's going to be a watershed in, so, the, in, the, in the march towards the entrenchment of democracy in this country and, and, and because all eyes you know, globally are on Nigeria because Nigeria matters a lot. You know, if you look at it from the global setting, uh, whether you're looking at the economic aspect of it or you're looking at the political aspect of it or you look at the social aspect of it, Nigeria plays big. You know, because we have we, are, we have the largest population on the continent of Africa. And, 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 we have. and I do agree with you. I mean, totally. I mean, I mean, in terms of what you've just said, but you you you, you know what? And I also do agree with you to a large extent that it's 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 a marathon, right? Uh, but the, the danger is this: it's possible for one person or a competitor to be well ahead, and when you now decide to pick up pace, it, it may be too late. But then, uh, let me allow you a light in us on the cardinal thrust of your party manifesto and now your overall blueprint that ties key national challenges and forges a synergy for coordinated development and not one that is lopsided and allows um, one sector perhaps to thrive at the expense of another. Yeah, well, we believe our philosophy is that of uh, uh, social capitalism. You know, that's what we believe Nigeria. Uh, policy that w the philosophy that will fit the the kind of situation we have in this country because this is a country that has very strong fundamentals when it comes to the economy, the economic uh, aspect of our of uh, of this country. Uh, but if you look at the domestic you know economy itself, the structures are very weak. So because the structures are very weak, and this is an economy that should key into the global you know uh, trend mm -hmm. which means you have to be a capitalist in your outlook but then you have to dampen and uh, kind of dampers you know in, in ensuring that the, the weakness you have in the structures for domestic economy so that the the weak ones in, in you know i'm talking about the poor now mm -hmm. are not uh, adversely af you know affected you know uh, that's why my party and my administration were looking at social you know uh, uh, capitalism and we are also looking at the situation where uh, we, 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 we place, or rather, we square our streets, our programs, on uh, three, uh, if you like, three-point agenda. Okay. That we are going to look at the uh, energy transition. We are, looking at, we are going to look at the climate, uh, climate, uh, uh, climate change. Mm. We are going to look at the, the fourth industrial revolution, which is going to be you know, uh, powered by information technology. And we see how we take advantage of this global trend because there's, if you look at discussions going on in the, in the, in the global setting today, it's about climate, climate, climate change. Yes. It's about energy transition. It's about information technology. This is where Nigeria should be leading. And that's why my administration will take Nigeria into because we have what it takes. If you are looking at information technology, we have young dynamic population that are, are very, very intelligent that have what it takes to really 
you know, uh, 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 be, be amongst the first, you know, uh, uh, 11 when you are talking about the players in that, mm -hmm. in that uh, information technology space. And when you come to climate change, we as a Nigerian, because, you know, what, what contributes, to, you know, so much to the climate change, you talk about fossil fuel and things like that. We are number six in terms of the countries that produce crude oil and the gas, which is the energy transition, you know, uh, uh, the source of, you know, source for the world, we have, you know, we are in, indeed a gas country. So, which means we have a lot to gain from these three, you know, uh, uh, mantra that runs the entire economy of the world today. That's why we will be, you know, uh, stimulating our programs and we turn on how to, yes, how to take advantage of the so much, you know, because we talk about debt. Yes. We can, in fact, you know, get what, what, what can translate to debt forgiveness or debt, debt, uh, debt, uh, you know, you just right. referenced two key issues for me. Yes. Uh, earlier on, you talked about poverty and now you talk about our rising debt. Yes. You know, I, I suspect like the others, you also plan to curb or is it to end poverty in Nigeria? Yes. I'm sure, I, I'm sure you have a plan for that. Certainly not. Certainly not. Our, our, our biggest problem, but our biggest problem yeah. today in Nigeria is revenue. Look at even the budget we have today. The, uh, the revenue is about 9.7 9 9 trillion naira. Our expenditure is 20.5 20 trillion naira, which means 50 percent, you know, of your budget is going to be sourced from either borrowing or I don't know how or selling but assets. The, the point so really is, how do you how do you intend to change a scenario like that? Exactly. And also, we have. We we, 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 we we translate what has become a trail of national budget deficits into one that is balanced and not just balanced but sustainably so yeah it's not it's not uh, balanced and uh, we don't you know the, the pro this government you know or rather let me talk about our government what our government is going to do we we'll make sure that we we, we fight this canker worm of financial leakages especially in the oil and gas sector you know which Truly, if we operate that oil and gas sector on the basis of the international best practice, there's no way we're going to have people stealing our crude oil in the manner they're stealing them today. Mm. There's no way you have your Cartagena Federation stealing mm. billions of naira of your money. And that's the tip of the iceberg. If pre probe is going to be really, real probe is going to be carried out into that sector, believe me, what we hear will be in trillions. And I mean it because just recently we were told that about 80% of our crude oil, you know, uh, 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 is with stolen. And then Nigeria is uh, so we are doing like, you know, firefighting, you know, all this uh, engagement of uh, Tampolo and what have you. Yes, when you have, perhaps, when you put yourself in, a, in, a, in such, such a, a mess, then what do you do? Like, uh, you can't take your line to rush, you know, your, 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 your uh, excursion. So, so what, the point I'm trying to make is that there are standard processes, standard mm. systems of ensuring that people do not steal your crude oil the way they're stealing it today. For instance, I know when I conducted the, 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 the study for NAITI on the military infrastructure, we, I discovered that there's no meters at, at the well heads. Mm. And if you don't know your production, if you can't determine what you are producing, how do you know how much you are making? How is it not possible that people will steal your crude oil without you knowing? Because you don't even know how much you are producing. You don't have meters. And then even, okay, if you can't put meters at the at wellheads, why not put them at the gathering fields? You know, even at the gathering fields, you don't have meters, I will tell you how much I've come there. So the point I'm trying to make is that we are running uh, 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 the, 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 the most important set of our economy in the, the most bizarre manner, yeah. in a way that you know is criminally you know, run by those that are in charge of that sector. Now, that's, they that's, know what they're doing. That, that's, and, that, that's a strong one. It's not a strong one. <laughs> the, the issue is that the issue is that, you know, if you look at the upstream, for instance, upstream, like you know, is normally joint venture between us and international oil companies. Why is it that international oil companies are using the latest technology in monitoring what is going into that in, in the oil system? And when it comes to Nigeria, the government that has 60% of the chair is manual done. Manually, manually managed. So that's criminal because we know what we are doing. It's not that you don't know what, what the system is to put in place. You know, our government will come yes. and ensure that we do not get to change or the, our money is not stolen in the manner it's being stolen. So, so when, I said, when I said earlier that that's a strong one, I actually meant in a strong opinion and I suspect your experience in politics also I mean, should make you a strong opinion on issues of um, fiscal and state restructuring, for yeah. instance, as well as the workings. Yeah. For instance, when you talk about, about um, yeah, uh, if, if you, 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 you,
government because I would really like to move you to other issues of governance like uh, federalism. But for, for, for instance, uh, as opposed to our current status or uh, the current status of our federation, a lot of people would say or may say that our union is strong, but is it truly really strong? So, I mean, tell me your development plan or how your development plan uh, intends to realign our federalism in a way and manner that works and promotes competitiveness amongst the regions, inclusiveness for all citizens, for you, for me, you know, for everyone and the general development of our union. We have a union that is very strong, I must tell you, because we have we have a constitutional democracy. Constitutional democracy means you don't do things arbitrarily. You know, it's where you don't have legal framework that you do things arbitrarily. And this constitution that you have is a living document. You can always amend it to suit the, the, the dynamics of the situation that you are in. That's why you have representatives that you have elected to represent you in the National Assembly so that when things are not working the way they were designed or the way they were, they were, they were, they were put, you know, so that they can change things to meet the requirement of the of the moment so that's why i believe we have a, you know a system that is alive you know if we if we really operate it the way we're supposed to operate it our government my administration will ensure that national assembly operates you know independently mm -hmm. but in harmony with the with the with the executive arm because we are going to pursue policies that will respond to the needs of the of the of the, of the people for instance we are going to make sure we align our fiscal policies with our monetary policies we will not allow our central bank governor to become an agriculture minister or industry minister or health minister that will be talking about how to buy things you know and then leaving you know even if you want to go agriculture you have agriculture banks what what has happened to why should the minister that's uh, why should the governor that will be giving policy decisions be going into last mile you know that's why we are turning things turning the whole pyramid on his head uh, but that's very, very very also, quickly, yes also okay also, let me just let you land here yeah uh, because we need to move this along we're fast losing time also we will not allow to pile up debts we will make sure that we take full advantage of what we have in terms of the sectors that are there which are like you know right food to be to be plucked which ones you have solid the mineral sector okay. you have oil and gas sector you have agriculture sector what is lacking is leadership to to propel i mean to move these sectors in a manner that to produce for us and then deliver you know, on the on the on the on the to something we want to and a really quick response. Yes, I mean, uh, where do you stand on the issue of um, a resource control and revenue allocation in Nigeria? I mean, and uh, give us a sense of your opinion or stance on the uh, the rather uh, uh, almighty. Let me use the word almighty, exclusive list of federal responsibilities. Well, you see, you do, you do. There are small countries that doesn't have exclusive, exclusive legislative list, you know, of uh, of uh, of. Uh, uh, would you, for instance, uh, then you have would you, for instance, allow power generation distribution, um, to be only on the exclusive list if you are president? Power generation should be done in a manner that it will be sustainable. And the issue of power, power is not something that you can just, you know, you need a lot Would of money. Would it be on the exclusive money. list in your presidency? It will be on the exclusive list to the extent that each state, you know, in the Federation is sufficiently, you know, provided with the enough energy. And how do you do that? And then you would in that states like, um, say, Lagos with capacity to generate their own power mm. and not to have rights to do that? No, that, you, that, that's not, you see, even as we have today, Lagos state has not approached the government with a proposal that we want to generate, you know, power. And they'll say, no, you cannot. You know, it's just been politicized. It's politics that is coming into it. But the reality is that even the federal government is looking for ways by which they can shed, you know, sort of these responsibilities. So it's not like a, 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 a straight jacket thing that you say this was exercise this list. I, I, you know, I, I, so, but I, the point I'm trying to make is yes. that power is not something that you can say. I mean, it's just one of them. I would, I can go on and on and mention several sectors. But you know what? At this point, I will pause you for a bit. Uh, just a few seconds, as a matter of fact, while we get set for the next phase of our conversation, which will be a quick one. It is ticking the boxes. And when we return, our guests will join us in reviewing some policy issues, engage their feasibility in terms of completion within a given time frame, uh, which is a period of four years. We'll be back shortly.
on time now for our guest Yabaji um, Sani of the Action Democratic Party ADP to uh, briefly review some of the policy issues on the ballot and take which options best um, suit his viewpoint. I'll remind you again, uh, these options are all within the time frame of four years, which of course is the uh, first term of a sitting president, any sitting president for that matter. We have a couple of um, issues on the board. Uh, let me see if we can put that up real quick. There are four issues on the board you have three options and um, there, there is the option of realistic if you think any of the issues we're raising is realistic there's also the issue of unrealistic there's also the option i beg your pardon of unrealistic and then of course there's also the option of undecided let's go with the first now universal health care within a period of four years first four years of your presidency uh, do you think it is realistic to achieve universal health care is it unrealistic are you undecided on the matter it's realistic Realistic? Yes, Within the first four years? Yes. Okay. Very quickly, we'll take that for you as being realistic. We'll go to the second um, issue there on our board. Let's quickly put that back on. And um, downsizing government. I mean, this is an issue that has plagued us, you know, that has plagued us in the country. Uh, a lot of times, people say the size of our government is part of uh, the reason why we are uh, nearing the near broke if we're not already there. You know, situation. For instance. Yes. So, for instance, instance, you will look at the budget. budget. This budget you have, about 8.7 trillion naira is in the current recurrent. So, which is about this? Can you size the size of government in four years? Of is course, realistic? of course. So that's realistic. Yes. We we'll go to item number three very quickly. And uh, national unity. And in the context of national unity, we are talking about issues like ethnic colorations, whether in politics, whether in governance. And uh, we do have the uh, federal character commission, but is that really playing out? Is that working for us in the first, in your first four years as president? Do you think national uh, unity is an option that is realistic or unrealistic? Or the one uh, let happen. me tell you something. We are at, at IPAC, you know, we are working on a situation where we have a kind of national unity government or you know whatever you want to call it, so that end of the day it will not be winner take all. No, so it no, is realistic all. for you. Is this realistic? This is very very that let me let me quickly move on to ending insecurity, which is the final item or issue on our board. Is uh, can you end insecurity in, in four years? Is it realistic or realistic? Are you on the side of the matter? Insecurity in four years. Insecurity, yes, but insecurity, you must understand that even America suffers from in insecurity. I, I get that, but where, where you, you will think so, you, it, it's not so, something so you, think you can end in four years. And what do you mean by end? I will make sure that insecurity is controlled that Nigeria will, be, will become a safer country than it is today. Uh, very well then, I would like to thank you very much Yabaji Sani, Presidential Candidate Action Democratic Party, ADP for coming on the ballot. I do wish you the very best, and uh, I mean as you go ahead in your campaign. Um, thank you so much for coming on the ballot. I thank you so much for coming on the ballot. Thank you very much for having me. Very well done. It is officially 129 days until the courting opens on the 23 general elections. We will be here counting down the days with you. Be ready to play your part. We are already playing ours. We are hoping that you go out and you do what you have to do. Make sure you go out on election day and you vote. I mean, we'll do this again tomorrow, but then at our usual time at 10.05 p.m. I'll see you then. Bye for now.